Imagine, if you will, a world shrouded in the mists of time, where vast ice sheets carve the landscape and ancient forests whisper secrets of survival. It's a prehistoric dawn, perhaps 100,000 years ago, when the first flickers of human ingenuity light up the darkness. Picture small bands of wanderers, their feet calloused from endless journeys, crossing treacherous seas on makeshift rafts, driven by an unquenchable curiosity for what lies beyond the horizon. These are our ancestors, Homo sapiens, stepping out from the cradle of Africa into a realm teeming with other human-like beings, cousins long separated by the relentless march of evolution. But among them lurks a shadow, a enigmatic presence that has eluded our grasp for millennia, the Denisovans. Today we embark on a journey through the echoes of prehistory, unraveling the threads of their story, piecing together a puzzle that challenges everything we thought we knew about our origins. Hold on tight, because this tale isn't just about bones and genes. It's about the raw, untamed forces that shaped us, the interminglings that blurred the lines between species, and the enduring legacy that pulses in our veins even now. By the end, you'll see humanity not as a straight line, but as a vibrant web of connections, forged in the fires of ancient encounters. Let's dive deeper into this prehistoric saga, setting our scene amid the towering volcanoes and lush jungles of what we now call Island Southeast Asia. Back then, the world was a mosaic of land bridges and isolated islands, shaped by fluctuating sea levels during the Pleistocene Epoch. Glaciers locked away vast amounts of water, exposing continental shelves that allowed migrations impossible today. In this dynamic environment, life was a constant battle against the elements erupting mountains spewing ash that blanketed the land, monsoons flooding rivers, and predators lurking in the undergrowth. It was here, in this crucible of change, that various branches of the human family converged, their paths crossing in ways that would forever alter the genetic tapestry of our species. The story begins not with grand fossils or monumental tools, but with a humble fragment, a tiny pinky bone unearthed from the cold depths of a Siberian cave around 100,000 years ago, though its discovery by modern science came much later, in the early 21st century. This bone, belonging to a young individual, held within it the blueprint of an entire lost population. Prehistoric times were rife with such hidden treasures, buried under layers of sediment accumulated over eons. Imagine the cave itself. Denisova Cave, nestled in the Altai Mountains, a refuge for ancient wanderers seeking shelter from biting winds and snowstorms. Bears, wolves, and early humans all vied for its protection, leaving behind scraps of their existence. The pinky bone, preserved by the cave's stable cool conditions, carried DNA that, when sequenced, revealed a shocking truth. This was no Neanderthal, no early Homo sapiens, but something new, a sister lineage that diverged from the path leading to Neanderthals around 400,000 to 600,000 years ago. In the vast expanse of prehistoric Eurasia, such divergences were commonplace. Evolution wasn't a neat tree with clean branches. It was a tangled thicket, influenced by isolation, climate shifts, and occasional reunions. Groups of early hominins adapting to diverse environments, from the frozen steppes of Siberia to the tropical archipelagos of the South, developed unique traits. The Denisovans, as they came to be known after the cave, embodied this adaptability. Their genome, extracted with painstaking precision, showed adaptations perhaps suited to high altitudes or cold climates, though we can only speculate based on genetic hints. For instance, certain variants in their DNA suggest resilience to low oxygen levels, much like those found in modern Tibetan populations who inherited them through ancient interbreeding. This points to a prehistoric narrative where Denisovans roamed far and wide, from the icy north to warmer southern realms, their movements dictated by the ebb and flow of ice ages. But why did this discovery send shockwaves through the scientific community? Because it upended the simplistic view of human evolution as a linear progression from primitive to modern. Prehistory was a time of multiplicity, with multiple human forms coexisting, competing, 
and sometimes cooperating. Neanderthals in Europe and Western Asia, with their robust builds and sophisticated toolkits, were already known. Early Homo sapiens, emerging from Africa around 300,000 years ago, but migrating out in waves starting perhaps 100,000 years ago, added another layer. The Denisovans filled a gap, representing an Eastern counterpart to Neanderthals. Their existence implied that the human family tree was bushier than imagined, with branches intertwining through gene flow. This admixture, the blending of genomes through interbreeding, was a hallmark of prehistoric interactions. It wasn't just survival of the fittest, it was survival through integration, where encounters between groups led to hybrid vigor, enhancing adaptability. For Denisovans, the genetic legacy is most pronounced in regions like island Southeast Asia, where up to 4-6% of modern genomes trace back to them. This isn't random, it reflects specific prehistoric events. As Homo sapiens ventured eastward after leaving Africa, they encountered Denisovan populations adapted to local environments. These meetings, perhaps around campfires on beachheads or in forest clearings, resulted in offspring who carried forward a mosaic of traits. To understand this fully, we must delve into the Out of Africa event, a pivotal chapter in prehistoric history. Around 70,000 to 50,000 years ago, during a period of relative climatic stability, a group of Homo sapiens, numbering perhaps in the thousands, crossed into Eurasia. The African continent, with its savannas and river valleys, had nurtured our species for hundreds of thousands of years, fostering innovations like advanced stone tools and symbolic art. But population pressures, climate changes, or sheer wanderlust propelled them outward. They navigated the Sinai Peninsula, or perhaps coastal routes along the Red Sea, entering a world already occupied. First came Neanderthals in the Near East, where admixture occurred swiftly, embedding 1-2% to 2 Neanderthal DNA in all non-African descendants. This happened early, before the sapiens population dispersed widely, ensuring the signal's uniformity. As they pushed further, the landscape transformed. Prehistoric Asia was a realm of diversity, steps giving way to mountains, then to islands formed by volcanic activity, sea levels lowered by up to 120 meters during glacial maxima, exposed the Sunda Shelf, connecting what are now Indonesia's islands to mainland Asia. This allowed hominins to island hop, colonizing places like Java and Flores. Here Denisovans, or populations closely related, awaited. Genetic analyses reveal that the Denisovan DNA in modern Australasians is distinct from the Siberian sample, suggesting multiple subgroups. One branch in the north, another in the south, separated by geography and time. The southern group, thriving in tropical settings, might have developed darker skin for sun protection or dietary adaptations for island resources like shellfish and tubers. Personal insight here. This fragmentation mirrors broader evolutionary patterns seen in other species during prehistory. Think of how wolves diversified into subspecies across continents or how birds on isolated islands evolved unique beaks. For humans, it underscores our plasticity the ability to adapt rapidly. Adding analysis, the lack of widespread Denisovan fossils speaks to preservation biases. Tropical environments with acidic soils and heavy rains dissolve bones quickly, unlike the protective caves of Europe or Siberia. So while Neanderthal sites abound, Denisovan remains are scarce, forcing us to rely on genetics as a window into the past. Modern populations in Papua New Guinea and Australia carry the highest Denisovan ancestry, around 4%, versus 2% Neanderthal in Eurasians. This gradient suggests localized admixture in prehistoric Sahul, ancient Australia New Guinea landmass. Isolated groups like Andaman Islanders, descended from the same out of Africa wave but lacking equivalent Denisovan input, bolster this. Their isolation on islands cut off by rising seas post-glaciation preserved a baseline genome without southern Denisovan influence. No super-archaic signal emerges strongly. 
What appears as such correlates with Neanderthal, Denise of an ancestry, likely undetected segments from those groups. This implies methods refine over time, revealing subtleties. In prehistoric terms, it means admixture was selective, genes conferring advantages, like immune boosts or metabolic tweaks, persisted. For instance, Denisovan alleles aid high-altitude adaptation in Tibetans, a prehistoric gift enduring today. Now let's turn to the fossils that populate this prehistoric narrative. Island Southeast Asia was a hotbed of hominin activity, a veritable crossroads of evolution. Consider Homo erectus, one of the earliest out of Africa migrants, arriving in Java around 1.5 million years ago. These beings with brains larger than earlier Australopithecines but smaller than ours, mastered fire and crafted Acheulean hand axes, symmetrical tools that required foresight and skill. Sites like Sangaran yield skulls showing thick brows and receding foreheads, traits suited to a life of endurance hunting in open woodlands. They persisted for over a million years, adapting to changing climates, from wet interglacials to dry glacials. But prehistory is full of surprises. On Flores, Homo floresiensis, diminutive hominins standing about a meter tall, emerged possibly through island dwarfism, where limited resources favor smaller bodies. Their tools, simple yet effective, help them hunt dwarf elephants and giant rats. Dating to around 100,000 to 50,000 years ago, they coexisted with incoming sapiens. Similarly, in the Philippines, Homo luzonensis left footprints in time, with bones showing a mix of primitive and advanced features, like curved finger bones hinting at tree climbing alongside ground dwelling. These super archaic groups diverged from our line over a million years ago, paint a picture of prehistoric diversity. Yet genetic studies show little to no admixture with them in modern genomes. Instead, the signal points to Denisovans. Why? Perhaps because super archaics were too distant genetically, leading to infertility in hybrids, or because encounters were rare or hostile. Analysis suggests that while Homo erectus thrived early, Later populations might represent inflows of newer groups, like Denisovan relatives. This brings us to the heart of the story, the Angandong skulls from Java. Unearthed in the 1930s along the Solo River, a prehistoric waterway teeming with life, where herds of deer and elephants drank amid crocodile-infested banks. These 12 crania date to 117,000 to 108,000 years ago. The river's terraces, formed by ancient floods, preserve them in sediments rich with volcanic ash. These skulls exhibit a puzzling blend, large brain cases around 1100-1200 cc, closer to modern than classic erectus, Thinner vaults, yet retained archaic elements like superorbital tori, brow ridges, and elongated shapes. In prehistoric context, such morphology could reflect admixture. Imagine a scenario. Denisovan groups, migrating south from Asia around 200,000 years ago, encounter remnant Homo erectus populations on Java. Over generations, interbreeding occurs, blending traits, the resulting hybrids inherit Denisovan genes suited to new environments while retaining erectus robustness. This hybrid vigor might explain their survival until sapiens arrived. Debates rage. Are they late Homo erectus, archaic sapiens, or a distinct taxon like Homo soloensis? Early describers in 1932 noted parallels to Neanderthals, a prescient observation given Denisovan's sister status. Adding new insights, consider evolutionary convergence, where similar pressures yield like forms. In prehistory, island life imposed constraints. Limited food led to brain-sized trade-offs, while social complexity favored larger crania. The Angandong folk might represent a Denisovan offshoot, their features a mosaic from gene flow with locals. Compared to the Dragon Man skull from China, massive with flat cheeks and large molars, Dated around 146,000 years ago, it shows differences but genetic distinctness, 
between Siberian and Southern Denisovans could account for phenotypic variation. Prehistory teaches us that appearance doesn't always match genetics. Modern humans vary widely despite close kinship. To expand, let's analyze the genetic evidence more deeply. Adding analysis, the lack of super archaic admixture is telling. It correlates with Neanderthal Denisovan ancestry, likely undetected segments. This implies that the Ingandong population could be the Denisovan-like group that admixed locally. But prehistory isn't just data, it's stories of lives lived. Before we conclude, let's make this vivid with real-life examples drawn from modern echoes of the past. Consider the Sherpas of the Himalayas, whose EPAS1 gene variant from Denisovans allows them to thrive at elevations where others falter. In prehistoric times, similar adaptations might have helped Denisovan sapiens hybrids conquer mountainous islands. Or think of indigenous Australians, whose oral traditions speak of ancient arrivals in spirit ancestors. Genetic studies link them to early migrations, with Denisovan DNA possibly influencing traits like robust jaws or disease resistance. A specific story. In 2019, researchers traced a Denisovan-derived gene in Papuans aiding fat metabolism, perhaps a legacy from prehistoric diets heavy in tubers and seafood. Relate this to a modern individual, say a Vietnamese woman discovering via DNA test, she's among the top percentile for archaic ancestry connecting her personally to those ancient wanderers crossing seas 50,000 years ago. Another example, the Bajau people of Southeast Asia, sea nomads who free dive for hours, carry spleen-enlarging genes potentially from Denisovans, enhancing oxygen storage. In prehistory, this could have aided coastal foraging during low sea levels. These stories humanize the data, showing how prehistoric intermingling's shape today's diversity from resilience in harsh environments to subtle health traits. As we wrap this epic prehistoric journey, the clear takeaway is profound. Human evolution is a testament to connection, not isolation. In the vast theater of prehistory, where Denisovans and their kin dance with our ancestors amid jungles and rivers, we learn that diversity strengthens us. Admixture wasn't weakness, it was our superpower, weaving a resilient genome from multiple threads. Today, as we face global challenges, remember this lesson. Embrace our shared heritage, for in the bones of the past lies the unity of our future. Thank you for joining this exploration. May it inspire you to look at humanity with wonder,